Good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here in Fishburn Theater and those of you who are Zooming in from classrooms. Everyone, remember to put your cell phones away and have them silenced, please. If you're in the classroom, put that homework away. Let's be prepared to listen to today's DeHart presentation. And now to introduce our speaker is Kate Cook. Good morning. I've known Reagan since my eighth grade tennis season and we became very close this past year. Reagan and I are not serious about much when we are together. However, this past season when she came to me about her upcoming speech, I was so interested and excited about her teaching and telling me all about it. Here today to tell you about psychedelic therapy is my best friend, Reagan Carlin. Psychedelic healthcare or psychedelic therapy is the use of psychedelic compounds to induce hallucinations such as LSD and psilocybin from magic mushrooms for the treatment of mental health issues. So what are psychedelic drugs? Well, psychedelic drugs are a loosely grouped class of drugs that are able to induce altered thoughts and sensory perceptions. At high doses, some of them, such as LSD, can cause visual hallucinations. This form of therapy is used to treat mental illnesses when other, more traditional forms of medication do not produce the results doctors hope for. Sometimes these drugs are prescribed on their own, but they are often combined with other treatments, such as talk therapy. While traditional medications often take weeks to work, psychedelics usually show immediate improvement, and often with only a single dose. The use of psychedelic therapy rather than traditional forms of treatment for mental illnesses is an experimental form of treatment that is showing improving results for people all over the world. Although legalizing psychedelic drugs for daily use is not something I think would be beneficial for the world, I believe legalizing these drugs for the use of experimental clinical trials by trained professionals could mean a new way for the world to treat mental illnesses. The history of mental illness dates back hundreds of years. Although it has just recently become a popular phenomenon, it has been studied and tested since before the 19th century. Common disorders such as depression, PTSD, and bipolar disorder were given dramatic names like hysteria and psychosis. During the 20th century, society and medical specialists around the world came around to acknowledge mental illness as an actual thing that shouldn't be stigmatized. Doctors finally started treating these mental illnesses, but the public's view of them still needed some improvement. Historically, patients suffering from mental illnesses were outcast from society and often seen as witches or proof of demonic possession. Obviously, we know now that this was nonsense. Harmful perceptions of mental illnesses often led to deadly outcomes for their innocent victims. Treatment never helped during this time as it often appeared as torture. In the instances that doctors believed their patient was possessed by a demon, exorcisms, malnutrition, and inappropriate medications were regular forms of treatment. The lack of effective treatment came from the idea that those suffering with mental illnesses were crazy or otherworldly. To this day, there are a handful of families and entire communities that are unable to comprehend the struggles behind mental illnesses. Time shows, however, that a stronger understanding has been adopted by society and advanced technology has allowed us to view the true physiological evidence of mental illness. Evolved treatment methods have surfaced as a result of this acknowledgement. Early forms of treatment for mental illnesses were far from perfect. During the 16th century, doctors split mental health issues into the two categories of demonic possession or physical illness. There was no in between. When physical afflictions presented themselves on a patient with mental illness, the treatment given to them solely focused on this issue. This is exemplified by a person with a mental disorder having a stomachache or a headache and the doctors only treating the patient with herbal supplements and lifestyle changes. Even as early as the 16th century, doctors were performing major surgeries on patients dealing with mental health concerns. Historical documents describe invasive surgeries, including creating holes in one's skull, known as a lobotomy. It was believed that by creating these large holes in the brain, one would experience decreased symptoms of their mental illness or some sort of release of whatever was believed to have been taking over their body. Mental hospitals were created as another form of keeping mentally ill people out of society. Later on, during the 19th and 20th centuries, mental hospitals, which came to be known as insane asylums, were used as punishment for people struggling with mental illnesses. Other forms of treatment were introduced during this time, such as electroshock therapy, continued use of lobotomy, and antipsychotic drugs. 
These treatments often became a way to fix society's view of those with mental illnesses instead of actually helping them. The more extreme forms of treatment, like the lobotomy, started to be viewed as morally wrong and eventually stopped being used. As more studies took place and doctors gained a better understanding of mental illnesses, treatments evolved and became more effective and less harmful. Psychedelic therapy has surfaced as one of the newest and most modernized forms of treatment for mental illnesses. Studies are increasing and research is evolving to give evidence to the use of psychedelic drugs in the field of medicine. A key issue, however, lies in the legalization and accessibility of these drugs and their medical use. As stated in Harvard Health Publishing's article on psychedelic drugs in psychiatry, quote, the problem is not so much how to get these drugs off the streets, but how to get them back in the laboratories, hospitals, and other supervised settings. The legalization of these drugs is something in the works in a handful of states in the United States of America. Examples of this are seen in the legalization of magic mushrooms in Oregon, ketamine deliveries to the homes of hundreds, and microdosing LSD and other psychedelics to treat anxiety. Billions of dollars are being invested into companies that sell these mind-altering drugs. Psychedelic drugs are everywhere, legal or not. The federal government does not yet recognize the medicinal benefits of these drugs, but as more experiments are being done and more research is published, there is a promise of future use of psychedelic drugs in the medical world. So through research, scientists are discovering that psychedelic drugs function in the brain differently than addictive drugs and may even be able to help addicts stop abusing drugs. In 2020, Oregon voters approved a supervised form of therapeutic magic mushroom trips. This ongoing legalization can be seen again in Virginia, where lawmakers have introduced legislation that would eliminate felony penalties for possession of magic mushrooms. More and more, lawyers and government officials recognize that psychedelic drugs are not impacting people in the same negative way that addictive drugs impact people. Although researchers don't really know how psychedelics work, this experimentation helps them to discover how psychedelic drugs can be used for the improvement of people's mental health issues. Scientists studying these drugs have an idea of how they may reset the brain of a user in these treatments through guided trips. But what are trips? Trips are what happens when someone takes psychedelic drugs. They are a temporary altered state of consciousness induced by the consumption of psychedelic substances. These trips are different for everyone but through guided treatments can be extremely beneficial. They can be intensely meaningful experiences that may shift the person's mindset or belief system, causing them to think and or behave differently. These trips cause changes in the brain through a person's neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers in the brain. Many mental illness treatment drugs act directly on neurotransmitters to change someone's mood and or mindset. Certain psychedelic drugs may also act on neurotransmitters, changing the brain's behavior and improving the person's mood. Researchers believe psychedelic drugs may work via psychedelic experiences, also known as trips, causing increased suggestibility or open-mindedness, neurotransmitter changes, and a new perspective on life itself. Increased suggestibility could make people more responsive to positive suggestions from a therapist or to the benefits of their own hallucinations. These drugs could provide patients with an outlet to reach into past experiences or trauma that traditional medications numb out so they can become more knowledgeable about what is going on in their minds and be more able to discuss it and learn from past trauma or experiences. Although many of these concepts are theoretical, researchers have been working continuously through experimentation and clinical trials to try and improve the effectiveness and to increase awareness of the utility of psychedelic drugs in the treatment of mental illnesses. There are several different forms of psychedelic therapy. The decision of what kind of treatment and what drug to use depends on the doctor, the patient, and the situation at hand. Because it is, it is still an experimental treatment, people generally only have legal access to it through clinical trials. The different forms of treatment include drug-assisted therapy, psychedelics alone, and guided therapy. Drug-assisted therapy is when a provider offers traditional treatments such as psychotherapy alongside psychedelics. Psychedelics alone is when a provider will only give a person a psychedelic drug with no other additional forms of treatment. Guided therapy is used in some forms of psychedelic therapy. It is when a trained professional guides the patient that has taken the drugs to their psychedelic high, offering therapeutic suggestions and helping the person remain calm. The most common forms of psychedelic drugs used in this treatment process include LSD, DMT, MDMA, mescaline, ketamine, psilocybin, and ibogaine. Now, what do all these abbreviations and confusing words mean? Well, LSD is also known as acid. 
The effects of this drug typically include intensified thoughts, emotions, and sensory perception. At higher dosages, this drug can manifest visual and auditory hallucinations. DMT is another hallucinogen with similar effects to LSD and magic mushrooms. This drug can also be referred to as Dimitri, Fantasia, or a businessman's trip. MDMA, also known as ecstasy, is yet another drug that alters mood and perception. It is chemically similar to stimulants and hallucinogens and was originally a popular drug in the nightclub scene or raves. Mescaline is a naturally occurring hallucinogen found in certain cactus plants. This is a broad category of several other psychedelic drugs, such as peyote, the San Pedro cactus, and the Peruvian torch cactus. Native Americans have used mescaline for thousands of years in religious ceremonies and to treat physical ailments. Ketamine began as an anesthetic for animals in Belgium in the 1960s, but was later approved as an anesthetic for humans in the 1970s. It was used to treat injured soldiers in the Vietnam War, and unlike other anesthetics, ketamine does not slow breathing or heart rate, enabling patients to receive it without the aid of mechanical ventilation. Psilocybin, or magic mushrooms, is a naturally occurring psychedelic pro-drug compound produced by more than 200 species of fungi. Lastly, Ibogaine is a psychoactive psychedelic with dissociative properties that is derived from a shrub in Western Central Africa. So how can all these psychedelic drugs lead to beneficial results? Well, based on the research done so far, in order to learn about the advantages and disadvantages of psychedelic drugs to treat mental illnesses, the advantages well outweigh the disadvantages. The possible benefits of psychedelic therapy include aiding in anxiety, depression, PTSD, existential dread stemming from terminal illnesses, eating disorders, and addiction. Psilocybin is commonly used to treat anxiety and depression, and it has proven to show long-lasting benefits. Because magic mushrooms share some similarities with serotonin, a chemical messenger that plays an important role in mood regulation, unbalanced levels of serotonin can cause anxiety or depression. Psilocybin acts on your body's serotonergic system, so it could potentially help restore the balance of serotonin in your body. In certain situations of a patient being unresponsive to traditional medications, doctors may suggest psychedelic therapies to treat their anxiety and depression. Psychedelic effects of hallucinogenic drugs may also help ease the effects of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Through psychedelic trips, people can reach into their past trauma so they can have a better understanding of it when talking to a therapist. Many people dealing with a terminal illness may feel anxiety about death or what comes after death, and studies have shown that the use of psychedelic therapy might minimize the, this existential dread. The use of these drugs may allow people facing such illnesses to have mystical experiences that can give them a glimpse of death and enable them to make a connection to their own vision of the divine. This may ease such stress and anxiety accompanying their existential dread. Eating disorders are a mental illness that hundreds of thousands of men, women, boys, and girls struggle with. Psychedelic therapy can help people shift their body image away from unhealthy thoughts and negative self-image, pushing them toward a direction of recovery. Lastly, how can the use of drugs help minimize addiction to other drugs? Well, studies are continuously showing that reducing other mental health symptoms through psychedelic therapy may stave off the abuse of other illicit drugs. Because depression and anxiety run hand in hand with substance abuse, helping the prior issue could subsequently help the latter issue as well. While there are a plethora of benefits as a result of psychedelic therapy, there are some risks that one might think to look into before delving into these newfound therapeutic experiences. Psychedelic drugs cause powerful and sometimes life-changing modifications to one's consciousness that can lead to serious side effects. These risks may include psychosis, fear, and in extreme cases, cardiovascular issues. Psychosis is a condition that impacts the way your brain takes in and processes information and ideas. The break in reality from using psychedelic drugs may cause psychosis in people who have illnesses that are more susceptible to this extreme response. Fear is an occurrence that can take place for people that hallucinate things that terrify them during psychedelic therapy. Although not extremely common during these clinical trials, people may believe they are dying or induce trauma from flashbacks of previously traumatic experiences. Lastly, psychedelic drugs can elevate one's heart rate and blood pressure. This can cause cardiovascular issues for someone with a history of heart disease or heart issues in general. Based on research and experimentation, these risks are very unlikely and most studies report few or no negative reactions. 
One recognized company that uses psychedelic medicine is MindBloom. MindBloom is a prescription option that sends ketamine directly to your home to be used in a set number of treatments with coordinated therapy and medical consultations. They state that, quote, at lower doses, ketamine can move you beyond the superficial layers of your day-to-day -day mind, heal unhealthy neuropathways, and help you achieve the clarity you need to live the life you deserve, end quote. Clients of MindBloom reported a 92% improvement in depression and a 90% improvement in anxiety after just two sessions. Their mission is to help people who have not had positive reactions to traditional medications and therapies by prescribing a new form of therapy, psychedelic therapy using ketamine. It begs the question, should we be investing so much into researching pharmaceuticals created in a laboratory, which may or may not be effective in the treatment of mental illness, when we have a variety of psychedelic drugs at our disposal that have proven success rates and cost very little to produce? Mental illness has been around for centuries. As knowledge of mental issues grows, so do treatments for them. Based on my research, psychedelic healthcare is a new form of therapy for mental illnesses that could change the way the world handles mental health for centuries to come. Thank you.